Nope. Okay, so here we are. And uh, let's get back to where we were. Phone rang. Had to answer it. And while I have a good, uh, uh, whoop, while I have a good uh, screen grabber, I don't have a good video editor, so I'm going to have to do this in two parts. Uh, so, uh, as I was saying, and let me get my pointer, or actually, yeah, uh, let's do laser pointer. As I was saying, we have the significant interaction. We have two significant main effects, but we have a significant interaction. And so, what does that mean? Uh, what it means is that we can't really talk about the main effects as being accurate anymore. Uh, so, uh, we have a main effect for uh, verbal IQ saying that uh, higher verbal IQ means that you comprehend more. Higher verbal IQ means you comprehend more. And here, oh, let me uh, get a pen. Here we see that's really not the case. You comprehend just a little more, but not a lot. But here, uh, having a higher verbal IQ means that you comprehend a whole lot more. So because of the interaction, because the lines are not parallel, we can no longer talk about those main effects anymore. And that's what I mean about the order of interpretation and that uh, the you know, interaction qualifies uh, the main effects. Now we can't talk about the main effects uh, without qualifying that, well, it depends upon which level of the other independent variable you're talking about. And so then we have an interaction here, and so the question is now what? Uh, well, in a two by two between subjects design, the first thing you do is look at a, the simple main effects. The simple main effects are you're going to look at the uh, effect of going from one variable, going from one level to the other level of one variable. So we're going to look at the effect of going from low to high IQ just at the high, uh, you know, sports baseball knowledge level of baseball knowledge. And then we're going to have another simple main effect and we're going to look at the effect of going from low to high verbal IQ uh, at the low level of baseball knowledge. And then, so there's two simple main effects. And then we're going to have another pair of simple main effects where we're going to look at the effect of going from one level of baseball knowledge to the other level and we're going to look at that at the high IQ level, high verbal IQ level, and at the high, low verbal IQ level. So we're going to have four simple main effects in a two by two factorial design. And what that will allow us to do is localize that interaction effect saying exactly where we are seeing the interaction. And so the way you do that is you'd open up baseball study, uh, you know, number three in SPSS, and then you conduct a two by two ANOVA and interpret the results. And what you do is you type this, uh, you know, or you do this to calculate the simple main effects. You've already done uh, the main ANOVA. So where's my pointer there? Uh, we've done the main ANOVA. And if you do that, you'll notice everything's significant. So now that you have a significant interaction, it's appropriate to do simple main effects. So in uh, SPSS, you go to New, and you open up a syntax window, because we're going to be doing syntax. And you type this in, GLM, uh, DV by IV1, IV2. Oh, don't you know bullet points. Well, that's okay. Slash EM means equals tables IV1, asterisk IV2, compare IV1. And so here's what it would look like. You go up to File and 
get a new syntax window. Here's a syntax window, and you just type this in. Uh, GLM uh, tells uh, SPSS that you're preparing to do, uh, you know, an analysis of variance, uh, and uh, then this is the dependent variable, and these are the two independent variables. Uh, this will just do the two by two ANOVA by itself. Then you need to do the uh, two pairs of simple main effects. So EM means equals tables uh, IQ V low by basketball uh, you know uh, L zero and here's a good example of how you should watch what those variable names are and make them uh, you know nice. Compare IQ and then we do that again compare baseball knowledge and I'm just filling in the specific names uh, for this general uh, you, know, out, you know format to do this and then when you run it uh, you're going to have something that looks like this uh, you're going to have you know the you know uh, two by two ANOVA table but now you're going to get uh, you know these two interesting tables. This uh, table is for the simple main effects of let's see it would be the simple main effects of baseball knowledge on reading comprehension uh, at the level of low versus high uh, you know verbal IQ and oh, nope this is on I'm sorry I screwed that up this is on verbal IQ and this is high baseball knowledge low baseball knowledge and so we're looking at the contrast mean square here F statistic significant level 0 0.003 contrast mean square F statistic uh, and significance level now we're looking at the simple main effects of baseball knowledge verbal IQ low versus high and mean square uh, you know F statistic and significance and F statistic and significance and so what's that saying is this that is uh, when we're trying to localize the effect in this experiment we see that there is an effect of you know for people who are low in verbal IQ uh, if you have uh, low versus high baseball knowledge, you see an improvement in reading comprehension. Uh, for those who have high verbal IQ, as you go from low versus high baseball knowledge, you see an improvement in reading comprehension. You see a slight improvement uh, you know, if you go from low uh, to high verbal IQ uh, in terms of people with low baseball knowledge and then you have a uh, you know increase in reading comprehension as you go from low to high verbal IQ for people who have a high level of baseball knowledge and that's what we mean by doing simple main effects uh, to localize the interaction and in many cases you won't have everything significant uh, but in this case it was but then you would know that you know uh, only certain parts of the interaction are significant and then another way of localizing what's going on and uh, you know finding out specifically where things are happening is post hoc tests and these are done when you have one-way uh, designs and uh, it's more appropriate to do them or you can only do them with between subjects designs so let's say that you have a one-way between subject ANOVA and the main effect is significant and you have three factors well uh, you know where exactly between those uh, no not three factors three levels where among those three levels uh, is there a difference? 
uh, you know that there's a difference someplace. There could be a difference between all three uh, levels. Uh, but where is it? And we've talked about this before uh, in terms of family-wise error. And let's say that the main effect is significant. Uh, so then what you want to do is you want to localize that. And so uh, we can talk about you know what we want to do. We want to have, oops, where is my pointer? Where, oh, I need a pointer? I have a pointer. Uh, we have statistical power, the ability to reject a false null hypothesis. We want to have good statistical power. Uh, we want to have a low family-wise error. You usually one around our chosen alpha level of maybe 0.05 or 0.01, whatever we want. And uh, we have different numbers of comparisons. Let me see what I, yep. Uh, so for example, if we have, that's where I screwed up. Uh, if we have three levels, then what we're going to have is we have level A, B, and C. And so the comparisons we'll need to do is between A and B, between A and C, and between C and B. So we're going to have three comparisons. And as I've been telling you in class, if we just do a t-test, if we do three t-tests, the family-wise error is going to increase. Uh, so we want to keep up our statistical power. We don't want our family-wise error to increase, but we still want to do these three comparisons. Okay, so what we do then is we uh, do something known as a post hoc test. And again, you won't have to do this, SPSS will, uh, but uh, you know what you need to know is how to choose between the post hoc tests. And so here are some of the common ones, uh, Tukey, and Tukey is a good test when you have a high number of comparisons. Uh, so if you have, for example, uh, five or six comparisons, uh, you know, if you had four or five, uh, you know, levels, then you'd want to use a Tukey. Uh, the Dunnett test is one that you would use if you actually have a real control group. If you have a control group and then two or three experimental groups, you'd use the, the Dunnett. Uh, the uh, least significant difference, the LSD test, uh, is the most liberal. That is, it has a high family-wise error rate, but it also has more power, and there's the trade-off. And then there's the Bonferroni comparisons, and that has good power, but only when uh, comparisons are low. So this is a cheat sheet in terms of determining which post hoc test you should use in which situations. And again, only use these when you have equal ends in each one of the levels. What about unequal ends? Uh, then you want to use the Hochberg, uh, which you should use when there is a large difference in the ends, or the Gabriel when there's a small difference in the ends. And what would happen? You use uh, the Tukey uh, Honest uh, you know, Significant Difference Test. And so let's say that you have uh, you know, three uh, levels, beginner, advanced, and intermediate. And so then uh, this is what it would tell you. And it would say that the difference between the beginner level and the immediate, intermediate level is significant at the 0.05 level. Uh, the difference between the beginner and the advanced subjects is also significant at the 0.05 level. The difference between the intermediate uh, and the advanced is not significant at, uh, any, at, at the 0.05 level. And so there are the three comparisons. And again, using the Tukey, uh, you have a very, very conservative test of uh, whether or not there is a significant difference between those three levels. When we have a one-way uh, analysis of variance uh, with three, why did I say this? Three, where is it? Oh, three levels. 
uh, then you have to use uh, the repeated measure options uh, in your uh, you know one way within subjects ANOVA or repeated ANOVA and so what you would do is you would basically put your uh, within subject variables here in the factor list you'd want to display the means for that factor you'd want to compare the main effects and you'd want to have you know uh, you want to use your Bonferroni uh, you know test and then you click continue and then it'll give you a output that looks like this and uh, this would be uh, the you know, you'd want to use the greenhouse uh, geyser uh, test or Wilkes Lamba uh, depending upon the situation and in this case it's significant at the point 0001 level and then it would also automatically give you uh, this difference between groups or uh, times one, two, and three. Remember, this is within subjects. So what's going on is uh, these are different measures at different times from the subjects. And so we could say like one is a pretest, two is after one week of training, and three is after th uh, two weeks of training. So uh, between the pretest and one week of training, there's no significant difference on the dependent variable. However, after two weeks of training, there is a 0 0.0001 significant difference. What about after, is there a difference between uh, training for one week and training for two weeks? Yes, there is at the 0 0.001 level. And so that's how you would interpret, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, post hoc tests in a within subject design. And I think that's it. So now we're pretty much ready for the exam, and that's going to be in a couple of days. Look for the announcement on Blackboard. Bye-bye.